Hello. In this video, I wanted to talk about uh, the Hamiltonian formulation for classical field theory. So, um, as always, we're going to be working um, with the analogous things from classical mechanics. So, I'm assuming you know already these things. Um, the conjugate momentum defined like this, the Hamiltonian is like this, and our equations of motion are like this. And now in field theory, we're going to have similar kinds of equations. Uh, so we're going to define a conjugate momentum field in kind of the same way we defined our conjugate momenta earlier. We so this time it's the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the time derivative of the field. And our Hamiltonian will be this. And we will have equations of motion that are like this. Oh, now these should be, this is an H. So we'll have a Hamiltonian density that is given by this. Uh, and so the Hamiltonian is the integral over all space of the Hamiltonian density. This is supposed to be like a fancy H. It may or may not look like that. Uh, but this should be, these should be the Hamiltonian densities that appear. And I'll try and do it. Okay. Okay, but it. Uh, so let's just do go on to the example. So as we always do, we're gonna gonna work with the Klein-Gordon Lagrangian. So if we notice here uh, now, because we have our conjugate momenta that I defined as the derivative with respect to the time derivative of the field, time is kind of a special coordinate. So we're gonna split are this derivative term into the time and spatial parts. Like I've done that a few times before. I just expand the sum. So zero is the time part, and then i is, is still sum only over only the spatial components. And then rewriting that. So d0 up and down are both just time derivative. So I'll write this as phi dot squared. And uh, d lower i is gradient, d upper i is minus gradient. So this is minus 1 half gradient phi squared. This term is still here. Uh, so this is our, um, sorry, this, yeah, yeah so th this is our Lagrangian. So now we can calculate our Hamiltonian density. So first we need our moment, conjugate momenta field, momentum field, which is given by this derivative, which is very easy to do. So pi is just phi dot. And so our Hamiltonian density will just be, uh, so pi times phi dot, but phi dot is pi, so we get a pi squared minus the Lagrangian. So minus all this, so we get that. And it just works out to be this right here. So this is our Hamiltonian density. So we uh, the we, we already know that the Klein-Gordon field satisfies the Klein-Gordon equation. So we would expect that our equations of motion should give that if we calculate these. So let's try and see that. And we'll run into an interesting problem here. So the first equation, so phi dot is d h d pi. Uh, that will just be pi, so that's kind of just the definition of the conjugate momentum. Or I mean, it's, no, well, no, it's not. But it's something. This is we already knew this. We already found this. Uh, 
uh, but the interesting equation is the other one. Um, that pi dot is negative derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to phi. So at first glance, we would say, okay, well, the only term that depends on phi is this last term. So we should have this, oh, 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 weird. We should have uh, this equation. So pi dot is, um, will be phi double dot. So we're, we're led to this equation of motion, which is notably not the klein gordon equation. So uh, the issue is that when we're doing when we're working with the Hamiltonian formalism, uh, the conjugate momenta momentum field and uh, phi are independent things, but the derivative of the field with respect to the coordinates, the, these gradient terms, they are no longer independent of the field. So we need to take the derivative of these, uh, the derivative of this term with respect to phi. Um, so I have worked that out. It's kind of you know, you might wonder how you actually do that. Well, this is how. So we want to calculate the derivative of this with respect to phi. And I'll go back to our old notation. Uh, so this is this. And we'll have a product rule. So just, you know, normal product rule. This will expand to this. And the interesting thing about this expression is, so what I'll do is di phi is just d phi dxi with i upper, and uh, d upper i phi is d phi dxi with i lower. And I can kind of pull off this operator, this dd phi, in, um, in both terms here. So I kind of have this whole operator acting on di phi and this whole operator acting on di phi. But notice this is, you know, d phi dxi times d d phi. That will just be d dxi. And similarly, this will just be uh, d dx i with i lower here and i upper here. Um, so yeah, d and again d dx i upper is in shorthand for that is d i with i lower, and yeah, this will be d i upper. So I have d i d i phi and d i d i phi, and these combine, and I end up with the Laplacian of phi. So if we go back, we need to add that term, or uh, well, it's minus dh d phi, so minus that term to the right hand side. So now we'll have this equation, which will lead correctly to the Klein Gordon equation.